Hey guys, welcome to Joy the Trade. This is my weekly roundup. It is the 11th of December. We have a couple of weeks left in this screwed up month, this holiday month, this final month of the wildest year I think I've ever seen in my life. And I've been in this business since the late 90s, since 98 to be exact. And the moral of the story is we saw volatility uh, in the second half of the week start to reemerge. We saw insane IPO action that I haven't personally seen since the 1990s. It was fully manufactured. It was timed to perfection. It, they rolled out these, these unicorns at the height of bullish fervor, at the height of frenzied emotion. And they got the pop they wanted. They got a triple digit one day return, which makes awesome headlines, make bankers super rich, probably make some executives at Airbnb pissed off because they left a lot of money on the table and they could have used that equity in their business. And it gets a lot of mom and pop and grandmas chasing stocks, which it is what it is. That's for the SEC to decide. That's not for me. But I think generally, broadly speaking, it's, it's a big bolster for the SPAC case in terms of uh, bringing private companies public and price discovery. Either way, it's insane. So volatility came back. We're seeing a lot of, we're seeing a lot of, uh, nervousness. We're seeing nervousness in some Bitcoin today. I'm going to look at that for you guys. We're going to compare some things and we're seeing a little bit of the VIX pop. So let's look at some of the charts I'm looking at. First, we made a very, very curious move here in the 10 year yield. So the, the yield going higher has been great for banks. It's been a reopening trade. It's been a sign that the economy is going to recover. And it's been a, it's been uh, gasoline for the bullish fire. An interesting move is that we can't break really, a, we, we've tested getting close to this 1% level and we've been rejected twice in November and December. We're, not, we're now back down a little bit below 90, but right around the 90 level, 90 basis point level. And this is a great tell, this chart. I think that you're going to need to see a, a pronounced move above one to sustain the bullish rally. I think you can get a a pop and some, some paint taping towards year end. Portfolio managers always do it around the holidays on small volume without it. But if you want another big 20% leg up move uh, in the NASDAQ, 10, 15% in the S&P, you're going to have to see this 10 year break above 1% in my opinion. IMO as the kids say. We've got the VIX here, which even with all the bullishness that we've had and all time highs and basically every indice, uh, had a hard time breaking below 20. And if those of you that have been watching the VIX for more than two years will remember that we were down in the tens and the low teens uh, in 2018. And so this pop back up here to 24, if we start testing 30, you could see a real correction, a 10% there in the S&P, 15 to 20% in the NASDAQ would not be impossible. I expect a correction like that at some point in the next 60 days. I don't know how or when, but I expect it. I expect it. The way we've run, that's just how, that's just the nature of things. You have to think of uh, the market as like a rubber band. When it gets like el the elastic goes too, too, too wide, it snaps back. Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting, everybody's looking at Bitcoin these days, right? Myself included. So... <clears throat> Bitcoin is always compared to gold. It's kind of like, for me, it's a false narrative. They should comp be comparing Bitcoin to uh, the FANG stocks because it's more of a, a risk on greed trade than it is a store of wealth at this point. It's definitely not a currency. Uh, nobody wants to use Bitcoin to pay th for things unless they have to. Uh, the slippage, the, the spread between the bid ask on buying Bitcoin, is so expensive and the volatility that you could be out 10% just trying to get some Bitcoin to pay for something. So not a currency, not really a store of value for me quite yet. It's a, uh, <clears throat> it's a technology growth play and gold is emphatically not that. It is not a technology growth play. I, I think that this gap has gotten a little bit crazy here and I expect, I expect gold to rally a little bit and I, I could see some selling in Bitcoin, in my opinion. You're getting it today, but I think you could get much more severe. Always the late 
panic people, the new bag holders always get a little bit of test of their conviction. And I, I think that's what we're going to be expecting and seeing here. And one last thing. So on the back of that, this is a trade that I, that I, that I have on actually right now in my money link strategy. And it hasn't been doing so great. Full, full disclosure, because the uh, XLF has rallied a lot and the TLT hasn't done much. But as, as the yield backs off, TLT will rally. And I think it's going to be painful for financial stocks here over a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So this down here is the spread. I think the spread can move up substantially here. Still a great winner on the year, but lately it hasn't been doing so hot. I think it's a good place to enter the trade. If you don't understand how to trade pairs, you should check out the money links. I teach you how to go long and short, and I show you what calls and what puts to buy on correlated assets. So that is my weekly update. Check out the money links if you want to learn how to trade pairs. This year was an awesome bull year. I think next year, the probability of a repeat of 2020 is pretty low, and you're going to have to learn how to trade some bearish positions. Just my two cents, my expectation. So have a great weekend, guys. Take care of your mentals. Take care of your loved ones. Take care of your health and get some rest. It's the holidays. Take it easy, guys. LFG.